Okay, I think we're live right now. So, as always, let me know if you can hear correctly everything and um and we can start um this new um live solutions. So, the main thing here is uh first you telling me if we're good, if you can hear me, if you can hear the instrument. you can hear those things we can start so hello everyone hello uh, watching everyone watching uh, hello Matt Milner hello uh, I can read Cristian Hernández vamos a estar también eh, respondiendo preguntas en español um, el topo torpe <laughs> Alan Loyola um, so I will be trying to, as always, answering your questions uh, in both uh, languages, if I can. Um, but mostly I, I will be talking in English, a really simple English. I'm not from uh, America. If you ever, if you ever was here, you know, you already know I'm from Chile. This base is called uh, Washburn Taros. T24 um I've been playing for about uh, five years six maybe and um I'm from Chile it's a little country in South America that right now it's uh, just moving all the time because of some earthquakes so if you see me running um you can close it uh, so Starting with some questions, whenever you want to, uh, and I'll be, I will be reading some some things. Uh, Jonathan Delgado, man, cover solutions, thanks. I don't play bass, but estoy aprendiendo contigo. <laughs> Very <laughs> multi-language. Hello, man. Hello, man. So you can give me tips how to play the slap part of Dig and Tommy the Cat. I just can't do it. Thanks. Okay, let me check uh, that. Let me check uh, dig. Let's start with the, with that. So the Madvein song. Let me um, search it, and we can start. So I played that some time ago. Let me check Madvein. Um, Dig. Mm. So I I'm trying to implement some new things. I have a um, this scene right here, and I have this one. So you can actually watch the tabs just like uh, the videos. So <laughs> let's see if uh, if it works out. Um. I'm I think you mean the the intro part and the and the slapping part in, in the verses I think. So let's check. Okay, the main thing is not that that difficult. If you already know the basics of slapping, you have the slapping right here with the Let me check the turning first. Okay. I need to give it a dropped turning tuning. That's that's the way I, I I tune down when I have to to just drop drop the the E string. I try to match it with the octave with the D I have right here and and you can check it with 
this uh, unison right here in the 12th fret you have the D the same D you have right here so something like that okay for the intro uh, originally played in um, B drop drop B so it's quite low but I'm not gonna down tune everything so I have this and for the intro I maybe you already know it but I will be reviewing it it's quite dissonant and, and it's for the start of the song so the thing you have to uh, if you don't know for the, these two strings you have to pop with two fingers uh, index and middle and trying to do them the same motion that you do with, with one so you pick the the two strings from behind and just pop it and adding the open string right here that I try to control with the thumb right there so I and you can not use the, the thumb also and try to control it with this hand I think it's better this way so quite slow it's and that's the main variation for that that slapping part and whatever so and you add uh, in some other parts you go back to that in some time so you have a and go back to that um, so I think you're referring to this part because this part it's quite tricky And that's the main thing. I you have some variations, but uh, I think if you can, if you have the the first bar uh, good, you can do the the other things um, easily. So let's practice. No, you know I I have a, I don't have much time, so let's practice just the that main bar so I can help you a little bit. So it's. quite slow okay so we we're beginning with a uh, slapping from 5 to 7 it's um, from D to E and we slide it just like you see right there you slide it with the slapping motion right there and you go and then muting the two coming slap you know when you mute just um, going back to it try to use the most uh, fingers you can right there in the fretboard so you have the sliding from 5 to 7 D to A, D to E and then the two slaps And then you pop in the ninth, the octave from E. So you have the main thing right there, the first part. It's 
recommendable for you to practice that thing sometimes so you get the I'm, I think the the most uh, the hardest part here it's doing the the fast double slapping in a ghost note I think that's the thing that requires most uh, technique yeah so when you're through with this part we add the next part it's again a ghost note and two slapping and the second one it's open and you hammer on through a B right here second fret a string and then you pop with ghost notes again popping with ghost note you really need uh, I think more uh, more more grip so you do you don't hear the the harmonics so try to cover very well the the fretboard right there and you go yeah that part and maybe try practicing in in that uh, velocity right here So let's complete the the full uh, measure. You have a okay D to E, A B, and then again two slap and uh, ghost note, and again another popping ghost note. So you have a that part. So very important to practice in uh, maybe with all ghost notes this motion two go uh, two slap and one pop two slaps one pop and trying to give that a, a nice sound before uh, trying to play this and then you go with this and you finish with ghost note right here and a G I mean uh, if you have it dropped it's not a G but uh, I, I, I usually just give the names of the of the notes I, I visually see in, in standard so but it should be an F right so you have and you practically repeat it again and add some some things but i think if you have that part it's uh it's important so the main uh, speed it's something like this so that's the difficult part getting to that speed so you practice really slow first it's very important just to practice slow and if you can't do it faster don't worry you will be getting there eventually so when you have it perfect really slow you can upgrade the the speed i always do it like that so if if you have it well done in this speed you can add some more maybe some more oh <laughs> i can't get it right there it 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 took some practice uh, at the time i i remember <laughs> 
something like that. It's some crazy things, yeah? But when you grab it and, and when you're quite a warm playing it, you will get there in, in, in the speed. But first practice it really slow. And I really think uh, you can play a little bit sloppier uh, in, in quite uh, faster uh, songs because maybe you don't notice. So um, that's a difficult thing to, to think about because you really need to be clean even if you play uh, fast. So try to be clean, playing uh, slow, 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 and then you can get uh, faster. So. I think that's a good spin. And you can get the motion. The motion is the, the most important thing. But whatever. Uh, you can practice it even better than me. Uh, but I think I pull it out in the time, so I'm not faking it. <laughs> I <laughs> um, but uh, you know when you practice some things um, they get a uh, they get old and you lose some practice so we can get there in time but yeah uh, that's for the first uh, question I think let's go to another one okay another thing uh, okay um, Jonathan Delgado said, <laughs> uh, I'm quitting bass. Don't quit. Um, it's just practice, man. It's no, I, I don't like to think about it as ma as magic and, and whatever, yeah? I try to, to think about it uh, quite um, reasonably. We are just humans. We all have hands and we can move, it, move them uh, at some... Uh, speed and whatever and practice and practice is is just something every everyone can get i think you know maybe knowledge it's it's more difficult um what kind of program do you use to record music what program do you use to write down the tabs and how do you create the tab baking tracks to play on okay first of all i don't i don't use uh backing tracks um I'm just cutting the the low frequencies of the songs. So, when you cut, um, uh, when you use uh, something called a high pass filter, and that is um, the name says it, it's a filter of frequencies that you, in which you uh, let pass the high frequencies and cut the the low frequencies. So you have that and just cut it right into maybe. 300 even uh, I, I think that's quite quite extreme maybe one 200 uh, Hertz and you give some space to the bass and obviously you sacrifice the the bass drum sacrifice the body of the song but you can cover it with the with the bass so I just do that for the supposed uh, backing track everyone wants and <laughs> and I don't have and for recording um, I use Cubase um, kind of like the, the workstation for uh, editing and whatever, the audio, and um, for uh, transcribing and writing, I use Guitar Pro. It's quite an, an old version, actually. I don't, I'm not very familiarized with the, the new ones. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, trying it, but I haven't heard uh, really good reviews, actually, so... I like to stick to the old thing I can do fast, you know. I I can really write fast in Guitar Pro, <laughs> even even faster than uh, another uh, program. You know, there there's uh, score writing programs like uh, Sibelius. You can pronounce it right <laughs> like that. I don't know. Sibelius uh, Finale. Uh, another 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 may many more, but. Uh, I think you you need to get uh, accustomed to one and and practice um for guitar and bass and and string instru instruments uh, drums 
rock things, I think uh, Guitar Pro it's ide ideal for me, you know. Uh, maybe it lacks some things, but uh, what what can you do? Um, do you use the iBox something like Sansamp? Um, I just recently ha had a, a DI, and I think it really improved the the sound. The thing with the DI, I, I just explained. Um, you really should have a DI box, even if it is uh, not the best because the 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 sound you will get it's uh, really clean you you kind of clean up the the noise of the the signal uh, and it gives you more clarity and it gives you more um, harmonic uh, richness and you can hear it i think you can hear it in the in the last uh, videos so you have <laughs> This didn't sound like this um, some while ago, but maybe you can't <laughs> notice, maybe you can, I don't know, but uh, it's really recommended for you to have a, a DI box. I have a quite cheap one, it's a Whirlwind IMP2, but uh, I read some reviews and it's it's great, great for me. I don't, I don't like uh, coloring the signal. So you can color the signal. You can add some some gain with uh, with some DIs and whatever, and it's great in um, if you're working with a uh, with just maybe just an amp, maybe just DI. But uh, I'm working with a lot of digital uh, VST CAV processing, and uh, it's just too much, so I don't use it. Um, so so. MuseScore is the one we use for university products and stuff, says Dylan Collins. I'm not really familiar as with that one, but uh, maybe it's another option, you know. You kind of have to stick to the the best for you, uh, I think. But uh, it's qu it's, uh, it's difficult sometimes because you get accustomed and you don't try new things. So you you have to be careful with that. Uh, I'm, r I'm very used to to old versions of software because I have them from a while ago and I don't improve them so it's something I have to work on and um, but because maybe I'm, I'm missing something yeah um, in Spanish pregunta en español que me recomiendas para empezar a tocar el bajo dice Rod Rodolfo Macías que te recomiendo para empezar a tocar el bajo tener un bajo o, o conseguirte un bajo, o robarte un bajo, y, y empezar a tocarlo, tocarlo todos los días, ojalá, al menos unos 15, 10 minutos o más. Eh, todos los días es importante, porque cuando practicas todos los días vas adquiriendo eh, costumbre, y la costumbre es, creo que es lo más importante, acostumbrarte a tocar lo que sea, eh, lo que llega a tus manos, lo que quieras escuchar, pero principalmente lo que te gusta, porque así te motivas más, eh, obviamente, a, a practicar. Creo que mucha gente te puede decir, bueno, parte con un profe, está bien, puedes partir con un profe y es lo ideal, pero también puedes llegar a cierto avance con las cosas que tenemos ahora, creo, con el internet, con ayuda de gente, con lo que trato de hacer yo, eh, Así que con eso y, y con mucha consistencia, creo, y, y tratar de seguir, aunque sientas como esa frustración de, ok, no puedo hacer esto, no puedo hacer slap, no puedo hacer eso, y, no, y, y lo veo y, y me frustra no llegar a hacer eso. Eso es, es muy poco motivante en muchos momentos, pero hay que vencerlo porque es cosa de práctica. Ahí es cuando se ve si tú eres realmente apto o no para llegar a, a cierto nivel, creo. Cuando te rindes, no lo lograste. Así que lo mejor es tener consistencia. Y vas a llegar al menos a, a la parte técnica. Lo demás creo que requiere mucho más estudio. Si quieres saber más de teoría y aplicarla en, en, en creación y qué sé yo. Creo que es mucho más académico de estudio y, y también lo puedes lograr solo. Creo que es un buen tiempo para una buena 
creo, era temporal para empezar a, a hacer cosas tú solo porque tienes mucho material disponible, mucho. Tener un guía es bueno también, por lo mismo trato de hacer esto. Eh, bueno, pero me alargué. Um, another one in English. What is your favorite band to cover? And I really like everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I learned to, to like everything I play. You know, the, the, the recent thing, the... Uh, how it is? The rock and roll uh, from Hairspray. That's something I maybe didn't play that much. And you have a, a new knowledge from a new genre you didn't quite uh, understand. And that gives you more uh, vocabulary. So that richness, that, uh, that learning you can have from playing everything... I think uh, it's it's something I I like to profess to to everyone, you know. Play play everything because when you when you really play everything you learn. If you just play metal, unfortunately you will only die uh, playing metal, so that's the thing. Try to open yourself and and not uh, close uh, the the influence you can get. Um Um, another question how long have you been playing I already said it about six, six years I don't know I think I've been saying six years for about uh, eight years I don't know <laughs> but uh, about that time not that much I think um, what is your most expensive bass this bass I, I just have this bass and I just had it from a long time From the beginning I've been playing, I've been playing just this bass, maybe another one, and a couple of other ones. But uh, I really like this one, and I think in time I learned to think it's w it was a good choice. Uh, there's a lot of good reviews for this bass, uh, kind of a, in a, in a middle-level um, bass. Um, and I want to improve really soon. I think I, 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 w I will be allowed to because it's not that I don't want to uh, have a lot of bases. I think everyone wants to have a, a lot of bases. So um maybe I don't, I I'm I'm quite happy with the sound I can get from here but uh uh I think sometimes you you, <laughs> you want to have something just to to get more um, appreciation as a bassist and that's That's quite a a bad thing, I think, because if you see someone with a jazz bass, uh, I don't know, uh, 60, whatever, uh, you will say, okay, he plays, you know, he's professional, maybe. So that's the thing. Um, I I'm not really sure, um, but um, obviously there's other things that I, you can respect from from the sound of of really good basses, but. Uh, I don't know. We will be getting there. <laughs> so um, don't call me a sellout when I have the a really great bass. Um, Toca una rola de los Smiths, dice eh, ADS Cuarti. Creo que tengo algo por ahí de, de Smiths. No recuerdo. A veces no recuerdo todo lo que he, he tocado realmente. <laughs> um, no sé cuántos videos son ya, son bastantes. No sé si alguien sabrá la cantidad. Um, otra pregunta rápida en español. ¿Estudiaste música dónde? Eh, estudié, obviamente, en Chile, en la quinta región, en Valparaíso, la Universidad Católica. Arriba en Cerro Concepción de Valparaíso. Um, estudié licenciatura en música alrededor de cuatro años. Y no seguí con la pedagogía que eran dos años más, me parece, o quizás uno más, eh, porque no quería ser profesor de colegio, así de simple. Y estaba con esta idea, y la desarrollé, y bueno, estamos aquí. Um, maybe another one right here. Um, what is happening with your band, says... 
uh, Mark Greenberg. You guys working on anything? And if yes, what style? Uh, yeah, you can check the everything of the band uh, in the in YouTube. It's called Ineres. Uh, you can pronounce it uh, kind of like uh, in here's and uh, it's uh, spelled I N H E R E S. You can search it and and go with it. But uh, I think um, we we always have some things planned. But um, I, I like the realm of YouTube. I really want to exploit it more because I think it's quite the future <laughs> for some things. Um, a lot of a lot of things in Spanish, muchas cosas en español, así que valor para todos Latinoamérica. Um, ¿Cuál es la canción más difícil que has tocado? Um, es difícil de decir porque hay varias difíciles, pero algunas han tomado mucha más práctica y otras que siento que las he tocado y no ha sido la suficiente práctica y lo he subido quizás irresponsablemente. Pero siempre hablo de la de The Rush, eh, YYZ, YYZ, eh, que creo que siempre he dicho que tengo que hacer una, un review de esa canción porque realmente no, no agarró el estilo que debería tener y tampoco la, la limpieza, creo. Eh, pero creo que ahora lo podría hacer un poco mejor. Eh, how do you choose a cover to play? Eh, ¿Cómo eliges un cover? ¿Y, uh, ¿Por Patreon o por el número? <risa> es una especie de, de Spanglish que estamos creando. Eh, ¿O por el number of requisitions? <risa> ¿O las escoges por su dificultad? Um, ok, ¿lo responderé en español o en inglés? No sé. Um, creo que tiene que ver con principalmente ahora con Patreon y con cómo eh, la gente pide canciones y yo las trato de ir tocando y, y de esa manera genero como una especie de, de avance económico también con esto porque en YouTube nada gano y eso tienen que todos saberlos eh, es nada, prácticamente nada así que por lo mismo está la opción de sobrevivir gracias a Patreon y, y las canciones que la gente pide um, así que si quieren obviamente ir ya lo saben. Eh, todo está ahí para, para saber y pueden preguntar también. Same thing. Uh, uh, someone asked me about uh, choosing a song to play. And how do I choose them? Uh, and maybe you know already I have the, the Patreon thing. And I'm trying to convalidate those things. And I will be trying. I have some things that are not from Patreon. But uh, um It's all about schedule, schedule, schedule. I don't know how to pronounce that. And the timing for me to play uh, that, and um, it's sometimes it's difficult. Yeah, but uh, more things will come. So even if it is Patreon and you see it, and maybe it's an obscure song for you, don't be afraid to to click it and maybe search it and and say, okay, I know this now. So it's not that difficult to to learn from things that are not uh, common um, al parecer estamos muy en español el día de hoy así que me parece bien um, nadie pregunta sobre canciones así que por eso no he tocado um, ¿cuánto, te, ¿cuánto te demoraste en sacar Around the World? ¿cuánto me demoré? uff la verdad no recuerdo mucho en tiempo, pero generalmente he tratado de tener una especie de una semana para, para practicar algo. Generalmente antes era más y ahora tengo que tener algo prácticamente, dos canciones en una semana quizás. Eh, y obviamente con práctica se hace menos engorroso, pero creo que esa canción particularmente es difícil por movimiento y si eres muy principiante te puede costar un poco, especialmente el... I don't re no recuerdo esta parte. Something like that. So, that part, esa parte, 
creo que si no tienes el, eh, un poco la, la suavidad de, de, de haber tocado un tiempo, puede ser un poco di difícil. Y la limpieza también, de poder llegar a, a eso, porque fácilmente lo podría hacer así. <risa> ¿Eh? O son <ríe> algo así y sale no muy lindo. Entonces, la idea es, por ejemplo, comprender lo que es eh, mutear eh, cuerdas indeseadas. Por ejemplo, cuando me muevo de una posición a otra, generalmente va a quedar resonando una cuerda, como es en este caso. Entonces ocupo el pulgar fácilmente para mutear o si quiero ser más académico puedo usar el pulgar de esta mano no, no sé muy bien cómo lo hará eh, Flea en verdad se si ocupa este dedo y quizás ocupa el pulgar hay gente que no le gusta mucho usar el pulgar pero en ciertas ocasiones hay que Dudo que use este dedo para mutear. Pero sí, esa es, por ejemplo, algo que es bastante difícil de, de obtener en un principio, pero que luego se hace un poco más fácil. Um, Alex Fizero, Ear Training and Why Not a, a Five String. No, uh, I don't understand the question, but uh, yeah, ear training and a uh, five string. Um, gracias por tus clases, tutoriales, éxito. Luis Díaz, muchas gracias. Um, Flea hace slap, sí, pero no solamente hace slap, también hace de todo. Um, ¿Eres chileno? Sí, soy chileno. Um, Mr. Nassim Beavers, I always uh, see you right here. Uh, do more bass lines from Robert De Leo and Stone Temple Pilots. I really like. Uh, I always say it. I, I I really like how he handles the 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 lines of a rock song. It's really great. So it, it's a really recommended player for you to understand some some maybe create creating more interest interesting lines by using more notes you have in the chord yeah so it's not all about playing the, and the root you know it's not all about playing I if the guitar is playing a g i'm not just doing this and then a c and an f and a maybe a <coughs> a minor But obviously you have great lines right there, you know, if you go to Pixies and uh, everyone loves her and uh, and that may sound great if if the, if the song needs it. So don't always disrespect the power of uh, of the root and the power of the <coughs> the eighth note. Um so But if if you want to have more vocabulary, maybe play uh, in a in a song that permits you to play more busy. You should play more busy and have uh, more uh, weapons to play. Um, <coughs> uh, what's your favorite Red Hot Chili Peppers bass line? Whoa. I I think that's really difficult be uh, because uh, you know you get raised by by many of them, but uh, I think there's something great uh, in a. And it's something that um that important I think because when you listen to the song in the in the intro. You 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 sing uh, the bass. You don't sing the guitar. Maybe a, a little bit, but you have that behind, and that's very a very melodic um, approach, but also very great 
in in uh, supporting harmony and uh, it's a really great um, memorable line to understand uh, but you know you can get a <coughs> really good examples from many songs from the Rejo Chili Peppers um, Jonathan Delgado dice también estoy aprendiendo esa canción con tu tutorial me alegro, muchas gracias uh, thanks for your videos it's really nice to learn songs I I passed the name it's she doesn't love it's the <laughs> name of the user um, <coughs> um, pregunta buena aquí gas, gas o gus um, apoyar el dedo en la pastilla podría ser una mala costumbre creo que para nada yo generalmente bueno en este bajo las pastillas son de este tipo cierto salida um, con esta capsulita plástica rectangular en la que generalmente uno apoya el dedo si está tocando en esta parte del bajo quizás algo de este estilo y tengo el dedo puesto para hacer una especie de eje y mantenerme en esta posición pero si tengo que tocar eh, aquí puedo usar eh, esta parte también es válido y si tengo que tocar entre medio, lamentablemente tengo que ponerlo en alguna parte y no usar la pastilla tanto. Quizás eso me, me limita un poco. Pero no hay problema si la apoyo. No creo que sea una mala costumbre usar este dedo para mantener un, un, una tocada más ordenada. <risa> Entonces, Mark G.I. J.I. dice, saludos hermanos, thank you for all the lessons. Question, best way to transition, okay, best way to transition from eight notes to 16 notes. I'm having problems. Okay, so you have something like that. Maybe you're playing in eighth notes and you try to do 16. I think the best um I'm I'm saying it in English. I don't I don't remember if it was in English or Spanish. Okay, English. Um <coughs> you have this and the main uh, warm up exercise for me and I use it for many things and practicing your rhythm it's uh, great for for uh, for this exercise. I'm just playing in this uh, tempo. I'm doing eighth notes all the time. This this exercise just consists of um, playing from the fifth to the eighth, one finger at a time, and just going through the strings and going back. That's the main thing. So you can play play it in, in eighth notes, and you can try to play it in sixteen notes. But when you pass um a string you play 16 notes and you go back from um uh, from it to another string so it's something like this in the g string you can play eight notes and the d string you can play 16 notes and go back here Very important, uh, use the metronome first, you know. Developing a good uh, inner timing, it's important for you. For you and um, if you try to use a metronome first, you will get a really tight uh, timing. And of course, listening a lot of music and uh, tapping along and playing along with a, a lot of music will give you really good timing too. Um, Hola, deberías hacer un cover de Don't Forget Me de los Record Chili Peppers. Um, Jordan Sánchez, Ignacio Novoa, ¿qué canción fácil me recomendarías para tocar el bajo? Please, soy chileno. Um, canción fácil. Es tan relativo, es relativo, pero 
Dime algo que... Un estilo que te guste O un grupo que te guste Y yo te puedo decir, ok Puedes partir con eso o no Porque lo mejor a veces es también partir con algo que te motive Porque si no podría estar tocando muchas cosas fáciles Pero creo que buenas bandas para ingresar eh, Siempre pienso en Foo Fighters Porque tiene como... Un, unas líneas bastante bien colocadas pero pero simples de una u otra manera um, y uno que otro grupo quizás más rock quizás más eh, rock pop generalmente esos géneros cumplen una función en el bajo un poco más simple um, incluso hip hop a veces incluso qué más bueno, y ustedes pueden dar también recomendaciones en los comentarios. Um, un consejo para principiantes en el bajo. Siempre doy, creo que recién di uno, pero ¿qué puede ser otro consejo para principiantes? Aparte de practicar todos los días, intentar hacerlo y um, cuidar bien tu posición. Creo que ese es el más valioso que te puede dar alguien. Y es importante porque... Tal como la buena postura, que yo no tengo, eh, es importante partir con una buena posición porque después quitarse de ella es eh, muy difícil. Entonces si yo parto y, y quizás pongo el dedo aquí para tocar y estoy así todo el día, difícil que después se me vaya a ir esa costumbre. Entonces tratar de no hacerlo, poner el dedo bien posicionado, mano derecha, siempre apoyando quizás aquí o apoyando en las cuerdas del pulgar. Tocando alternadamente al principio Índice medio, índice medio Tratando de no hacer grandes movimientos Movimientos sencillos Apoyar eh, Dedo en la cuerda Tocar y mantener el dedo en la cuerda que viene De esa manera tengo un apoyo Eso con mano derecha lo más fácil Y mano izquierda No poner el pulgar siempre aquí Ponerlo detrás eh, ingresar la, muñe la muñeca más hacia adelante y tratar de tener esta posición mucho más correcta especialmente si quiero tocar eh, aquí en estas partes y tocar siempre en el borde de los eh, trastes o espacios en el borde final y tener un buen sonido siempre si algo no está sonando bien repítelo hasta que suene bien no digas eh, ok está más o menos Sigamos Eso es letal Así que tratar de no hacerlo um, No hablo portugués Lamentablemente Ojalá algún día pueda um, Si sí, soy chileno um, My fingernails need at least two weeks to grow back Max Miller says And I'm a classic guitarist So I need, I need them Can't afford to break them Okay, I think I understand that. Um, when I was playing some guitar, it was difficult uh, because I'm a I'm a nail biter <laughs> actually, so it's really difficult to to me to man maintain uh, long nails. But uh, if the case, it's uh, it's really difficult to convalidate the the two things if you want to play bass because you really don't need. Uh, long long nails but you can use maybe fake nails maybe it's not the same but uh, if not it's um, difficult um, but I think uh, some I, I've seen some people using those uh, I think fake nails and uh, glued, glued them together <laughs> and something like that um, ¿Por qué te gustó tocar el bajo? Creo que ahora, en estos tiempos, es un poco más aceptado tocar el bajo. Creo que antes era como, bueno, el, el, el idiota que, que no sabe tocar bien toca el bajo. O algo así, medio despectivo, qué sé yo. Pero, bueno, la gente creo que se empezó a dar cuenta que eso era bastante estúpido. Así que... Cuando te vas dando cuenta de lo que significa el rol del bajista, quizás te puedes enamorar bastante de lo que significa eh, tocar. Obviamente si te gusta también mantener eh, 
la base de, de, de un grupo, que creo que eso es lo más importante. La, unir la base rítmica con la base eh, melódica y armónica creo que es un punto de control muy interesante en una banda. Y hablo en español relativamente neutral porque no voy a andar hablando en, en chileno porque los chilenos hablamos terriblemente como el pico. <ríe> eh, toca papi donde está el funk. Algún día la tocaré. Eh, how do you get good at reading tabs? That's interesting. Okay. Let's use this new feature that I like. Okay. Whoop. Um let's use this as an example. The same thing with the with the dig um tablature from Madbane. And you see right there um you know a lot of uh, different things notated and reading reading that may be a kind of a, a scary in the first time, you know. But it's not that um, difficult. I will have a, a, a stream um, that I want to have that I kind of failed <laughs> some time ago that I wanted to just uh, talk about how to read tab, how to read tablature and how to understand it well. But uh, it may be difficult uh, at the beginning, but it, it will it will be getting um, you know faster and 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 easier with time but yeah um i think the good thing with tabs is that you can uh, see what you want to play right in the in the instrument so you have a five and you search it and you go to the seven and you have it but uh, other than that uh, reading um, the rhythmic notation below it's really important also knowing what it what's a whole note half note quarter note Uh, eighth note, sixteen, thirty second, and whatever, and knowing um, different techniques uh, written in the in the tablature. If you have that, you will have the the hammer on, and you play like this. If you have the S and the P, you have a, a slapping. If you have um, that little um, thing for the sliding. So you can search everything uh, if you're not clear with it and you can ask me in whatever video and I, I try to <laughs> answer whatever s um, question I have actually. For a, a long time I think I've been um, trying to answer everything, every comment and I think I do it. Maybe someone doesn't have the 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 <laughs> privilege to to get their their questions answered but um because I get a lot of comments but um if you do great questions will you will get the the answers so um Jonathan Delgado taps made my life easier I can't read tablature that changed for me Um, Mr. Eh, Vasilenko, hola amigos, says, um, please toca dejando libre el amor. No la puedo llevar, no la conozco. ¿De quién es? Uh, <laughs> um, do you have a band? I have a band. It's called. Uh, you can spell it. <laughs> I I say it that way because it's difficult. You can spell it I N H. E R E S and you can search it in in the channel of course uh, in recommended uh, channels mm. in what sectors do you believe it's best to have single or double or double coil magnets i have to confess i'm not really the the best at a uh, <laughs> at gear at um And um, I, I don't consider myself a, a really good person to answer things related to 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 gear itself, you know, in the in the in the deep thing. I'm not that into the the the, the deep thing, you know. I mostly just play and, and try to get a good sound, but uh, 
Uh, I will save that that question because I want to answer it in some time. Um, another question. ¿Por qué me recomiendas el bajo? Dice David Herrera. ¿Por qué te recomiendo el bajo? Te recomiendo el bajo si quieres tocarlo. No te voy a convencer si no quieres tocarlo. Simplemente así. Um, pero si, te, si lo escuchas y te interesa, practícalo y te vas a dar cuenta que es un gran instrumento. Um, Another question right there. Uh, should I learn to read bass notation? I'm not sure if it it, it will help me at all. Okay, that's interesting. I think um, I know how to read a notation also. Um, bass clef notation, the usual. Uh, and actually, I don't read it um, that great compared to the tablature. And that's a thing. Uh, it's, it just for practice you know i i have to work with tablator because it's more universal for me and uh, it's great for internet um and i do it and i i can easily read something i, I never uh, listened before in tablator uh, but with a uh, notation it's harder because i don't practice it uh, all that much But I think it's important for you if if you want to have more um, more understanding on some things. You know, n it's kind of a, like, kind of like knowing a, another type of writing. Um, you will get more uh, more job actually if you can read a notation because some people just use notation, some people just use tab, and you have to get um, flexible to it and understand the, the, maybe the, the two things in a, in a good uh, basis and trying to go up from there um, you, know, you know I always defend <laughs> tablator because some people will always think it's kind of a, a the stupid uh, brother, brother of, uh, of notation or, or whatever this is uh, I don't know whatever other insult you can give <laughs> to it, but um, if you use it well, I think it it gives you more direction to to play correctly, uh, faster. You know you have the the positions, you have the rhythmic. If you read my tabs, you have the rhythmic uh, help, and you have the harmonic help. I'm using right in front of the above the the tablature, so you have the harmony, you have the rhythm. And you have the the exact position in which in which you will get a better uh, fingering and whatever. So I think it's quite um, academic for me. It's not that different to notation. You're not missing um, much of the things that makes uh, music music. You know, you have the rhythm, you have the harmony, you have the um, notation itself you have a you can have dynamics in a tablature you can have um, the n the names of the notes so y that's the thing for score i understand that something is a, a c because i i see a little dot painted in a in a page with a a, a little you know line crossed And the same thing is for tablature. I just watch a number and I say, okay, that's a C. The same conversion goes for me, but in another way, in a more uh, pattern um, directed way. And for me works better, I think. But I also know I have to learn notation. And also I have to know Uh, each of those things are not that important for me. I, I really need, should, um, you know, maybe l memorize some things, also learn some things by ear and just play them. And uh, it's just a help, you know. You can't. You're not better if you don't read uh, music. I really think about it. 
Leonidas Right Babe <laughs> Them man, proud of you, Cover Solutions For doing what you love And having your channel in English To reach a wider audience I like the dedication you put into Answering your subscribers Keep going, thanks um, I'm trying to answer everything That's the thing This is a guide channel Learning channel It's not a, a showmanship thing I will not be doing a Uh, you know the usual uh, clickbaity thing or or whatever you know this is for you to learn and that's why I eliminated the background that's why I, lim I eliminated my face and you can see just the instrument maybe just my bo bo voice right now for for me to to guide you but you have the essential for for just learning um What do you think about other tun tunings? Says Glenn Nelson. <coughs> other tunings. They are necessary in some uh, in some songs, some aspects, you know. Um, but uh, down tuning, tuning maybe a, a little, you know, annoying in some uh, sometimes. Someone like me that has to play a lot of songs and. Uh, Maybe for one song I had to tune a different way and whatever. So sometimes it's um, annoying, but uh, it's necessary, you know. If you want to get a, maybe a darker sound and and whatever. Um, hola, dice Rex Mortal. Um, what is your favorite song to play on bass? I really don't have much favorites of anything, you know. I I really enjoy just jamming along maybe. But uh, usually when I play just to to have fun, I put maybe some bass, some drum um, drum backing track or whatever and I just play along with it and I, I'm not in my in my free time kind of I'm not playing replaying the songs I play I'm, I'm just trying to jam along and, and try to incorporate the things that I I just took from one place and another you know that's the thing practicing and and jamming for yourself it's always really important to develop kind of like your sound but i re i don't really don't really think you you can have an original sound in these times you know okay another hello love your beats Please play "Could Have Light" by Rejo Chili Pepper. Another, another Rejo Chili Pepper song. Yeah. I would love to <coughs> play a lot of uh, Rejo Chili Pepper songs. But you know, it, it's all about time. It's not that I don't want to. Please, algo de los chancho, dice Jaime Gajardo. Type, what type of strings are best for slapping? Does it matter what type you use? Um, I think you will get different sounds with different types of strings, but uh, the best for slapping, I don't really know. I don't think there's a best one, but uh, round wound are really bright uh, strings so the slapping will be a lot brighter you know and maybe you want uh, a more bright slap in the most cases you want your slapping to sound um, great uh, and bright to have the the kind of a the that kind of a piano feel i don't know that 
that sound you know, when you play slapping with dead strings it doesn't sound that great for me but it may sound in a context uh, better you know you can slap with flat bones and what other whatever other string uh, thickness or or whatever um another one maybe um What is the secret to having the perfect tapping sound? Reading for greedy readings from Greece. Secret to having the perfect tapping sound. Okay. When you're trying to do some tapping, I don't know. Uh. Mm. I think the thing it's um trying to maintain a good uh, energy and position of your of your fingers and um and not sounding uh I think it's hard not sounding um quite sloppy maybe dirt uh, having a, a dirty sound I don't know um most people try to play slapping and do something like this um <laughs> and it doesn't sound that great because you're not defining the notes uh, well and that's um a, a common error is when you tap and you lift to get another note you really need to kind of um, lift to the side so you get a another kind of a, a Uh, type of strumming type of uh, strumming when you when you hit the note so you when you're doing this and you want to get this note you kind of uh, tap to the side if you're not doing it it will lose the sound i think that's th something that i've seen in people not manage enough so y if you have something like this I kind of have that um, sound because I'm playing and tapping to the side and at the same time playing again with the same finger, with this finger. Another thing, it's quite difficult to maintain a good uh, rhythm, so practicing really slowly so it doesn't get uh, messy in the in the rhythm part you know doing something like this that's just nonsense yeah trying to practice slow and trying to do the same um, dynamic the same sound richness for every note and whatever something like that I think there's no secret to to it just practice i think um i have never played a bass with scallop frets i don't know how how it sounds but um i i would love to try try new things that's every that should be a a, a goal for everyone you know um So if you have more questions about uh I think um I think the ideal question for me uh, for someone right here it's someone that okay watched a video and had a kind of a a question that was not answered in the video and he can tell me okay can you play this part of this song you already uploaded because some some people are ask, asking for songs that I I never played in the channel and the thing with that is that um i can't 
analyze the song completely in in that few minutes so this is not the place for new songs i think for me to play um right now okay so it's not the place for request it's not the place um uh, for uh new songs for me to play request you can give them you know in in the channel <clears throat> thanks for another answer another question do you play very low in the strings like very near to the lowest part like the flamenco players do very i i, I don't know what if you mean uh, playing low in this part you know playing right here or playing right here i don't know maybe you can reformulate it because i i i i think i don't understand um So I've been playing for a few months, says Matt, As Matt, Matt Astic, <laughs> um, for a few months. Is the Westbourne T24 a good base for where I'm at now? I really think so. I don't know if it's easy to obtain in, o in other countries, you know. Here in, 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 in Chile, you can, um, you can see it um, everywhere. I think... Um, It's a, a good base for intermediate and, and and higher, I think. I think it's a good base. But you can get some some squire thing. Maybe it's kind of uh, great, obviously. But if you're... I don't know. If you're playing... A start, if, if, you're, if you're playing for about a year and some something like that, don't think about you know having the greatest instrument I, i don't think it should be a goal for you your goal should be playing great any instrument you know playing your instrument uh, knowing knowing you how to play but uh maybe you won't get the much out of it if you have a kind of a, a really expensive bass and you've been playing for about a um months You will not sound better because you have a, a great bass. That's a really bad uh, assumption. Um, $220, says uh, Mark, Mark. Okay, that's something about it. No, it's, it's quite cheaper than... <laughs> that I just bought it right here. Everything is quite uh, ex more expensive right here. Um, hey, can you help me with the chorus from Sir Duke? I really don't understand how you played it in your video. Okay, that's a really n nice thing to, to end it up. Let's go to it. Um, I didn't read your name, but thank you for the question. That's the thing I want <laughs> most from this part it's just me playing a little bit too um okay let's check it uh we have a um, stevie wonder sir duke mm. i'm checking the okay and we have it right here This is the chorus. I I don't remember. Maybe. Yeah, I think this is the the chorus. Yeah. I think 
you let me know um so this is how it is written right here <laughs> So you kind of um, in the in the song get the the same feel. It's something like the same in rhythmic rhythmic feel. It's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that main part is just using that that rhythmic feel and using some ghost notes you know you can simplify it by just doing this and this part kind of the same but here um, this song has a um, a swing feel for the 16th note so when you are confronted with a six, 16 notes you don't play it uh, like this you play like this dun, ta, dun. it's not Okay. So that part it's right there. That's the main thing for the chorus. Yeah. If you have a kind of a more um, um, specific um, question about it, I really like this part. And you notice in that part, it's quite um, evident. You need to play the the sixteen notes in that manner. Yeah. And that part, I think I remember it was really difficult but really fun to play, you know? That part. fun um, but yes I I I hope I answered kind of the question but <laughs> you can elaborate more and, uh, and we can answer it again um, okay um, Recién me compré un bajo in Spanish. Eh, me gusta su sonido. Qu quisiera tocar covers de temas que me gustan, pero me siento torpe al mover mis dedos y tocar. ¿Qué recomiendas tú para nosotros los principiantes? ¿Qué hacer? Ok. Me siento torpe al mover mis dedos y tocar. Ok. Entiendo. Y lo mismo le decía a otros principiantes que han pre preguntado. Y tiene que ver también con con paciencia a veces y con eh, tener paciencia porque mucho de tu memoria muscular y mucho de tu tonificación muscular también se tiene que dar con el tiempo y eso no te lo puede eh, dar otra cosa pero te recomiendo que aparte de intentar tocar las canciones y seguir intentándonos las canciones que tú quieres tocar trata de al menos antes de comenzar a tocar, hacer ejercicios de calentamiento. Eso es súper importante también. 
bastante simple, por ejemplo, una nota a la vez desde el, digamos, desde el primer espacio de la primera cuerda hasta el cuarto y teniendo un dedo, otro dedo, otro dedo, otro dedo a la vez y tratando de mantener una posición de esa manera. Puede que en los primeros eh, cuatro sea difícil, así que puedes partir desde el quinto hacia abajo y puedes hacer esto. 5, 6, 7, 8 Primera cuerda, segunda Lo mismo aquí Y manteniendo una buena posición Para calentar de esta manera los dedos Y tener una buena eh, Corrección de posición también Importante Entonces cuando vaya a tocar No tocar así Jamás Jamás hacer esos movimientos tan eh, bruscos ni tan eh, grandes al tocar son movimientos pequeños y solamente tienes que presionar y mantener los dedos donde están lo mismo para esta cuerda y para esta otra y siempre alternando con la mano derecha índice medio 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 y volver y también bajar Puede que sea un poco aburrido al principio, y siempre lo va a ser en verdad, pero es importante porque es como prácticamente como calentar antes de hacer ejercicio. Así que incluso te ayuda a no dañarte. Importante entonces para principiantes, antes de agarrar el bajo y comenzar a hacer lo que sea, calentar un poco, 15-10 minutos quizás. Tocando de esta misma manera, de manera escalar. Creo que este es el que siempre ocupo y el más sencillo. Y después uno lo puede ir variando. I'm from Chile. Which country are you from? Says uh, Shira. I'm from Chile. Um, another question, maybe a final question. Um, is it bad? That a bass has a bad ring to it, almost like a tin can. Yeah, it may be uh, the the clo the closest the strings are to the bass. They they will sound more kind of with this sound, that kind of sound. But uh, it it's it depends on the player the the amount. Of action you will have action is that uh, having the, the the strings closer or or not from the bass, but it may be a construction problem also. You know, it may be ringing from this part. You know, the strings are maybe are, are too um, n too near from for from the nut right here of the neck. So it may be something you need to solve with um, with some uh, a specialist. Um, Mr. Nassim Beaver says, "Will you ever admit that you're wrong about in the meantime?" Okay, uh, I do, I didn't even know I was wrong, and um, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can check it again if you want. So tell me what's the the problem with that song, and we can uh, fight about it. Um, yes, how to fix? Okay, yeah. The thing about it, you really need to get some uh, expert to do some of the work if you're not quite sure of what you're doing. I just regulate the action right here. I can lower it and raise it. If you use uh, an Allen, 
Allen wrench, I think it's called, to insert it in these little holes and you can get the, the strings a little bit higher or lower and you can um, adjust the truss rod, the truss rod right here there's a little hole in the base of the of the of the neck right here but i recommend you not to mess with it uh, if you're not uh, knowing what you're doing um mr nasim beavers says bass is tuned is tuned slightly higher Okay, it's slightly like a semitone or slightly like a less than a semitone. Because in those, you know, I have a lot of uh, songs that have a kind of a intonation problems because it's difficult to know in which exact um, A it was, um, it was, you know, recorded. You can variate the, the type of a440 or maybe it's 435 or whatever so it's difficult in, in those um in those aspects but i know if it's higher than a semitone maybe i'm wrong i don't know i i'm never i never said i i'm the the genius transcriber you know i may be wrong and i like when uh, some people tell me with arguments that i'm wrong that's really important you know give some arguments um if it's less than a semitone it's difficult man to to get it uh i think I, i'm getting better at, no, at knowing uh, you know if it's sounding good or not but um but yeah okay i think i'm leaving this uh for today um i will be going back next week i really liked and uh, today's stream i think uh, we talked a little bit of everything as usual but um if you have more questions you can leave them uh, or maybe save them for next time so i can answer them um i'm trying to read everything but sometimes it's difficult so thanks um to everyone tuning in and um, and thanks again to everyone Matastic, Max Miller Simon uh, Mark um, Scar Dreams says please don't leave us um, and there, there will be time you know I'm not going anywhere and you can leave some questions and save some questions um feel good ink was uh, was the thing with it i don't remember Hi everyone, um, Mr. Vladimir Putin, <laughs> gracias, gracias también a la gente que escuchó en español, eh, estoy tratando de hacer las dos cosas al mismo tiempo, es difícil tocar, hablar en español y a veces hablar en inglés y a veces decir las notas en inglés, decirlas en español eh, y mientras tanto preocuparse de la transmisión, mientras tanto muchas cosas, así que espero estar haciendo lo mejor y responder también las dudas de ustedes si supiera más idiomas respondería en esos idiomas if I, you know I know English I know Spanish but maybe someday I will I will know other languages so I don't know I want to help every one of you so thanks again and goodbye see you soon <laughs>